Carl Brentzel and Hamish Murray. The pair from Tapanui. This digger boat sits very, very high on the waterline. Grouting less drag into the all-important hairpin. Got in and out of there without too much drama. Very, very surprising. So uh, this is just going to be a ripping run here. It's got to be from Carl Brenzel. Who needs to get down into the 48 seconds? The split is a 31.542. So Carl Brenzel, Hamish Murray, really going to have to uh, tighten the belts here. Squeeze every last bit that they can out of it. They will have improved, no doubt about that. And uh, 49.7 there for Carl Brenzel. So he has gone about 0.3 quicker than he has all day. Will that be enough when you've got the likes of Simon Gibbon, Rick Berg, Neil Marshall in the 47s and the rest in the 48 second zone? But we do know that it is a race of attrition. So it'll be Andy Ryan, Kerry Ann Allen now in the Joker. Andy Ryan, certainly an exciting driver to watch. This is the bloke who, uh, well, he's had some uh, pretty exciting off-track excursions. Oh, absolutely clipped the inside of that island on the way through. Very, very brave line. He's got the Joker face on. Into the hairpin. Well, he hasn't gone too bad around there. I've seen him do a hell of a lot worse. So, it is now Andy Ryan with the Joker. He needs to also be down in the 48s. The low 48s, the high 47s, if he wants to progress into the top five as well. So they're really going to have to push very, very hard. This boat they did a lot of work on throughout the course uh, between the last race meeting and this one. And uh, hopefully this is where they'll be ringing it out, ringing it out hardcore. Not going to be where they need to be. 49.463. 49.463. They've gone 0.3 seconds quicker. However, will that be enough? Considering you've got Harry Willens, Ollie Silverton, and Ross Travers in the 48 second bracket, and Neil Marshall, Rick Burke, and Simon Gibbon in the 47 second bracket, there is only room for five in the top five. Now, I realise that I'm probably not the best mathematician, but five only goes into five once. Maybe. I think. All right, Harry Wheel and Jason Conroy. So these young men are from the Wellington region, from the, the lower half, the design student and uh, the uh, oh, shepherd, that's it. I was trying to think one of those people look after sheep, they're called. And uh, well, anyway, sometimes I'm about as smart as a suicide bomber's investment fund. But anyway, there is Harry Whelan's and Jason Conroy out on the track at the moment. They came into this round with a 48.942. And they have just been getting quicker and quicker. The split was a little bit off ideally where they would like to be. But now opening up the final apexes into the bottom and under the loop with a 49.186. And uh, they've blown that out by about 0.2 and find themselves still at the top of the table, but we still have the likes of Ollie, Ross, Neil, Rick and Simon to come. Ollie Silverton, the next boat off the trailer now. Jess Sit doing the navigational duties. So Ollie Silverton now coming to the line under starter's orders. Launching off the line, the winner in the last round at Whitra wants to continue that winning form. Nice lines at the moment. If he can hold it together the last time out, he bogged it down in the hairpin. Where is he going to go here? Not too bad, just not carrying the speed. Probably losing a lot of time in there. Ross Travis, Rick Burke and Neil Marshall all doing that hairpin at a greater rate of knots. You need to be getting there. You need to get out of it, you need to do it fast, you need to do it smooth. And it is a very, very tricky bit of waterways to navigate. 
Holling Shelton a little bit wide around the exit to that Mount Fresh Island on the far side. Now, as he's coming into this finish line, Holly Silverton and Jess Sid, 47.666, and they have gone one second quicker. They go to the top of the table. So that is a great run from Holly Silverton. The previous run that Ollie did, he got bogged down into that hairpin. That time, in and out, he got in while not at pace, got in smoother and dropped the second. Ross and Shane Travers now. This is radioactive. The boys from Wanganui, the father and son team. So uh, slowed it down into that hairpin as well, not throwing the boats in. They saw that uh, perhaps saw that Ollie well, knew that Ollie Silverton went in there a bit slower, a bit smoother, came out cleaner, and that's how it is going to work smooth and clean. Ross Travers with a split of 30.5, he's in and around about where he wants to, wants to be. So Ross and Shane now in this launch for the line. This is going to be reasonable and a 48.048. They've gone point, uh, roughly 0.3 quicker than they have previously. They slot themselves into P2 behind Ollie Silverton. At the moment, moving forward from this top eight into the top five, Carl Brentzel currently on the bubble in position five. Neil Marshall and Michelle Reed now. So, the uh, former rally driver from New Plymouth now behind the wheel of a jet sprint boat in the Stinger Group A category. So, so Neil Marshall, Michelle Reed, Eagle Automotive, they had a nightmare at the start of the season. They sunk the boat in the preparation for Mary Mary. They uh, blew a rod, they did something, um, and then they came out and uh, managed to pull off a win, sitting themselves nicely in the overall championship thus far. Neil Marshall and Michelle Reed. The split is just a 30.6, so they are down on their previous best split. Lining it up, opening it up. Now the right-hander, right across the surface, pulls ends inside. Neil Marshall, Michelle Reed and a 48.087 they have gone oh, point 0.1 and a bit slower and put themselves in a p3 that is the end of carl brentzel for the day now sitting on that top five bubble is the joker andy ryan and kerry ann allen as we see now rick burke and elf kill in a triple two firewater circulating in the launch pool the starter has called them up. Reigning world champions came in this with a 47.832. You're talking about a time of 47.832. You know that this is the uh, sort of light at the end of the tunnel that they'll be looking for. They suggested during the dinner break. No, excuse me, suggested during the dinner break that uh, maybe they had the head switched off on the last run. Might need to tidy things up a little bit. the fire water machine at the split that's a very good split of 30.3 they'll be happy with that they're not going to know what that split is at this point or oh, sharpened it up there a little bit probably leaned on the wheel just that little bit heavy got the nice line through the wibble wobbles now into the oil oh, lays the boat right over that aisle of 47.762 into position number two and they have gone 0.1 quicker than their previous best time. So that is the end of Andy Ryan and Kerry Ann Allen. It is now Harry Whelans and Jason Conroy sitting on the bubble. As we see Simon Gibbon and Tom A. Paul Thompson, Novus Auto Glass from North Canterbury backing off the trailer. The time that they need to beat to 
progress is a 49.18 that was produced by Harry Whelan's and they will progress. Mind you, their quickest time is a 47, so they've gone significantly quicker. They just need to hold their head together. Don't overthink it. Don't overdrive it. And at the moment, Simon Gibbon has been fast. He has been smooth. And that is continuing on at the moment. Into the mouth fresh hairpin. Backed it off. Set the boat up. Uh, not overly impressed with it, but it all in all wasn't too bad. Now into this uh, big change left to right. To the far side of the track. Coming in to the loop to get to split time. That is the quickest 30.0. And Paul Tomo Thompson looking pretty good at the moment. The lines are absolutely spot on. The race lines, the boat, the hull, everything sitting nicely. 47.421, Simon given to the top. That eliminates Harry Whelans and Jason Conroy going into the top five in the Stinger Group A category. It will look like this from slowest to fastest. Neil Marshall. Ross Travers, Rick Burke, Ollie Silverton, and that man, Simon Gibbon. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, go up there and grab some tucker. Hot dogs are a couple of bucks, chips are a couple of bucks, and drinks are a couple of bucks. So there you go. For six bucks, you can get a hot dog, some chips, and some drinks as well. Get up there, grab some tucker. And as we wait for